In 2006, I was accepted to my very first top level leadership position. And the very first time that I had the opportunity to speak to everyone, four people stood up and walked out of the room. How do we deal with rejection in leadership and communication? Welcome to Advance with Mike Acker, the podcast designed to help entrepreneurs, business leaders, and professionals alike break through barriers by improving their practical leadership skills and increasing confidence in speaking. Your host is a best-selling author, executive coach, and founder of the Advance Public Speaking School and Advantage Publishing Group, two companies dedicated to providing an edge for leaders. Find out more about Mike at mikeacker.com. Now here's your host, Mike Acker. I believe that there are incredible benefits to being rejected. I know that's weird. I I don't like being rejected. I'm not saying that I hope that you're rejected. I just believe that there are incredible benefits to being rejected. In fact, I was thinking about this with my son recently. We were playing outside and he was going over to a neighbor's house and he wanted to play and that neighbor was playing with somebody else. And there's a part of me that wanted to protect him and wanted to make sure that he didn't ever get rejected. In fact, anybody who rejects my son is going to experience the wrath of his dad. Maybe you have a feeling like that as well when it comes to your kids. And maybe you'd even do shelter your kids to some degree when it comes to rejection. However, I believe that rejection, especially when met with a good acceptance somewhere else, like my son has with my wife and myself, is really helpful to build someone up. Rejection in your communication, rejection in your leadership will actually bring some benefits to you, especially when you have some really strength and anchors elsewhere. But here's what rejection does. Let me just walk you through four things that rejection does, and then I'm gonna give you four things to do when you are rejected. And rejection might come with someone really disagreeing with you. Rejection might come from someone firing you. Rejection might come from you offering the job to someone and someone not tactfully saying they don't want to work with you. Rejection might come from someone that you're leading and that person has some words to say to you in a 360 degree review. So it might come in all these different ways, but regardless the way that it comes, rejection can actually help you. So rejection first, I wrote this, rejection will help you work harder. There's something to prove when you have this experience of rejection. Like, hey, I'm gonna show you what what I really do have inside of me. In fact, when those four people stood up and walked out, there was a desire within me, a burning desire to prove them wrong. I love that Michael Jordan talked about having that same kind of burning desire to work harder when initially he was rejected. It will make you go out and get more reps. It will make you go out and improve your resume. It will go out and make you go out and read some books. It'll it'll have you hire a coach. It will really make you work harder if you lean into it. Rejection doesn't have have to be a bad thing. It can be a good thing when it causes us to work harder. Not only that, rejection will help us become stronger. And really what I'm talking about here is character that in the inside of who we are, who are we? When the going gets tough, do we get out or do we reach into our character and say, here's who I am. Here's who I am and I'm gonna keep on going no matter how tough it gets. There's not only more that I can do and work harder, I can reach deep into myself and become stronger. I think about this for all those runners out there. There's been periods in time where I've been a runner and running five miles a day, seven miles a day. And there comes this moment in time when you're running where you think, I just don't want to run anymore. And yet when you're running, you pull something deep inside of you and you say, I'm not quitting. I'm not getting out. I'm going to keep on persevering. I'm going to hold on to my word. I'm going to make this happen. I am going to become stronger. The third thing I wrote down is that you try smarter. When you're rejected, you try smarter. 
Initially, most entrepreneurs, including myself, initially the things that we set out to do don't work the way that we thought. And yet when we get rejected, we have an opportunity to say, you know what, I'm just gonna go back over here and do what I know, or we can try smarter. And really what I'm going for here is creativity. We can let our mind go, okay, what else can I do with this? And in fact, when the, when the pandemic hit in 2020, there was a moment where a lot of my world, like I imagine maybe yours as well, was thrown out of balance. And, and instead of getting frustrated and getting, um, getting exhausted, and there was definitely some tiredness that, that set in during that time, but instead of that, I decided that I was going to make some shifts and try some new creative things. And here's what happened. It didn't work. It didn't work. The first one didn't work. The second one didn't work. Finally, the third one sort of worked. And yet I kept on trying smarter, kept on trying to get more creative in it. And I reached inside of myself to, to not give up in the midst of it. And I kept on putting the hours in. See, that's what rejection does. When you get a no, when someone says, I don't like that, I don't like you, I don't appreciate your speech, I don't appreciate your leadership, whatever that rejection might look like, you have the opportunity to work harder, to grow stronger, and then to try smarter. And the last one I wrote is grow tougher. All of us need to develop tough skin. I know that even by just launching this podcast and being on YouTube and having different viewers, that there's going to be an opportunity for haters to come to me and say, I don't like what you do, you're stupid. Not even constructive criticism, just destructive criticism. And we all have some of those people in our life. My son, who's five, is going to have some of that just destructive criticism because kids don't have filter when, when they're saying no to others. And my son has done some of that destructive criticism towards others. When a little boy came over to play with him and said, I don't want to play with you today. I want to play with so-and-so. And that little boy went away heartbroken. <laughs> we'll get on to parenting some other day, right? But right there, there's going to be some times where you just get said no in, in a mean, cruel way. Four people standing up, walking out on me on the very first day of my leadership. Why did they come? They came so that they could make a point that they didn't like me. There, what was the helpfulness in that? Yet it does help if we allow it to help us grow tougher. And I'm talking about the skin right here. I'm talking about what happens when, when we get that, that rejection and whether we let it get underneath us and really boil inside of us or do we do we filter it out and allow it to help us grow more confident? I've been thinking about this a lot because I do a lot of work on confidence and I'm working on my next book, which is Speak With Confidence. I have Speak With No Fear. I have Right to Speak. I have some other books, but I'm writing this one. And part of what I talk about is rejection, that all of us need a healthy place to experience rejection where we're still loved, we're still anchored in, we still have assurance of our value elsewhere, but yet we're able to see this rejection, feel this rejection, and let it, let it develop calluses on our skin. See, calluses are crucial for confidence. If, if you're wondering how do you get more confidence to speak up around the, the Zoom room or the, the table in your office or wherever it might be, how do you get that more confidence? One of the things that you're probably struggling with, if that's a question you have, is what if people cut me off? What if people don't listen to what I say? And you know what? That might happen. You might speak up in that environment and you might have people not pay any attention to you at all. And a lot of people, they shut down from that and they say, well, lesson learned, I'm never going to do that again. But if you take that rejection in a good, healthy way, and you know that your value is not in just that one moment, and you keep putting yourself out there, and you keep learning, then your skin grows more calloused in a good, healthy way, so that you're able to deal with more of that rejection in the future. Some of the most confident speakers are those who have been rejected a whole bunch, and yet don't give up. They get stronger. They get tougher. They try smarter. They work harder. That's what rejection can do for you. So here's a little bit of a homework assignment I have for you. I'd love for you to try this out and even respond back to me. Just email me at mike.acker at steps2advance.com. 
But here's what I would love. Put yourself out there, risk yourself somewhere that you might get rejected. (laughs) If you're single, it might be asking someone out. If you're in a workplace, it might be proposing something. If you're a CEO, it might go be hiring the top notch person and really reaching out to them and extending an offer to someone that you really might not even be able to afford and just reaching out and trying it. Go, go big. Put yourself out there in a way that you might be rejected. As a result, if they say yes, well, hey, you've got a new relationship, you have a new employee, you have a new venture. If they say no, then lean into what I'm saying here, that rejection can cause you to work harder, become stronger, try smarter, or grow tougher. What do you need? I want my son right now to experience rejection. Okay, that's the mental side. Emotionally, I don't want him to experience rejection ever in his entire life. But right now, I do want him to experience a certain degree of rejection because right now he's really in a safe, profound place where he can come and my wife and I can talk to him and help him process that rejection and put it in its proper perspective. A lot of people get into the work world and when they've never had that type of of rejection and they've always been sheltered, it's just extremely difficult. They don't know what to do. I was listening recently to the performance that Justin Bieber did of his song, Lonely. And when he was about 15 years old, he was launched to international fame and incredible levels of success. And he talks about all the stupid mistakes he made and now that he got rejected and all these haters that came from it. And he says, is that just the price to pay for fame and fortune? And that's a great discussion for a different day. But here's what I love about that. He's talking about rejection. And he's talking about how that rejection in his life made him feel lonely. But where was he? He wasn't in a safe, protected environment. He was out on his own. He had to process that rejection all by himself. And that's what he talks about in that song. So do you have a place where you can process that rejection? Now, if you don't have any place, you need to go to a counselor or such. But but if you have some friends around you and you can bring that, hey, this is what happened to me or a coach, and you can get the proper perspective, then it will bring about those different benefits that I talked about, where you work harder, you become stronger, you try smarter, and you grow tougher. My son right now has that, so I want him to get a good amount of rejection so we can help process that so he's tougher later on. Think about this. The best salespeople, so if you're a salesperson, listen in. The best salespeople experience rejection a lot, but don't give up. They just keep leaning in to the different benefits. They work harder, they they become stronger, they, they try smarter, and they grow tougher. A great salesperson knows that no, 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 soon becomes next. No becomes next. Rejection leads eventually to success. And that's what I want all of us to learn because to some degree, all of us are salespeople. If you're a politician, you're a salesperson. A lot of our clients are politicians. If you're a pastor, you're a salesperson. You you have a message that you want others to buy into. And if you're a CEO, you're a salesperson. If you're a tech, you're a salesperson. You're trying to sell people on your performance. If you're interviewing, you're a salesperson because you are selling the potential employer on you. So you and I, we need to get better at rejection in a healthy environment. Recently, I was reading through some of the reviews that my book has, and it's just something that I've done from time to time. And as of this recording, I think my book has 375 reviews on Amazon. It has reviews elsewhere as well, but I read one and recently it said, absolute terrible, not for me, nothing good in this book. And initially that rejection statement came to me and hit me like, like, like a big huge truck hitting somebody crossing the road. I don't know what it, what it hit me like. It just, it hit me and, and I felt it. And there was a sense of like, oh, my shoulders felt like they drooped and my head wanted to drop down because that's what we do when, when we experience rejection. And then, and then I had to pause for a moment. And I went with a, a group of people that I do some communication with and talk and a kind of a group support type deal, a professional group. And I read it to them. I read that rejection in the proper perspective. Now, is there some merit to her words? We'll come to that in a moment. 
But ultimately, rejection is really helpful if you have the right type of group support around you. Now, let me lean in and give you four ways to respond to rejection. So the four benefits are that you work harder, that you become stronger, you try smarter, and you grow tougher. These will be in the show notes as well, as well as connect.stepstoadvance.com, which will be a growing library of resources for the podcast and YouTube listeners. But now let's lean into the four different ways that we respond to to rejection. What do we do when we get rejected? And here's the first thing I wrote down is hold on to your vision. Hold on to your vision. When you write a book, you have a vision typically for what you want that book to accomplish. I know I did. And so when you get that kind of rejection or you don't get the sales that you want or whatever the rejection looks like, you got to hold on to the vision. You got to put that in front of you. When you are building a company and you keep on hearing no and no and no and no, or when you're selling a product and you keep on hearing no and no and no, you got to hold on to the vision. And then when you hold on to the vision, when you have a picture of where you're going, and it's not this just blurry vision, but it's a high definition vision. Like I know what I'm working towards. I know what I need to accomplish. I know my end goal. Think Michael Jordan again. He knew his end goal was, I want to play professionally. I want to do this for a living. That allowed him to really reap the benefits that we already talked about. Work harder, you you grow stronger, you, you grow tougher, you become stronger, and you try smarter. If you hold on to the vision, then those benefits become yours because you're not getting distracted. Too many people, when they experience rejection, lose sight of what direction they're going towards. So say, for example, you want to lose a lot of weight and you're going towards there and you hear someone make fun of you behind your back. What does that do in that moment? It causes you to lose sight of where you're going. Instead of seeing where you're going, it can make you see where you're at. And as a result, you're discouraged and you might be tempted to give up. But you got to look at where you're going. You got to look at where you're going in life. Keep that vision ahead. Yeah, be aware of what's happening here. You don't want to live so far in the future that you're no good right now. But you want to know where you're headed to. If you know you're trying to get to the top of the mountain, the rejection that comes in forms of muscle pain and different things that happen along the way, you you trip, you fall, the different difficulties that you experience on the way to the top of the mountain. Well, if you know where you're going, it gives you the energy, that focus, that desire to keep on going. So write down your vision crystal clear so that you can keep that vision front and center. In my book, Lead With No Fear, which I wrote with another executive coach, Steve Gutzler, we talk a lot about vision. It's one of the chapters we talk about. And we have an incredible case study from Wes Herman. Wes Herman had a vision for a company that he wanted to create. And then he was thrown into prison. Wow, can you imagine FBI coming to your house, getting you, putting you in prison right as you establish a vision with your family? And what happened? Well, he knew where he was going and he knew what he was going after. So that year became a tempering year instead of a year of disaster. For you, what is your vision? Where are you going with your company, with your end career goals, with your family, with your fitness? Wherever it is that you're experiencing rejection, you need vision to get you through it. So that's the first way we respond to rejection. The second way that we respond to rejection is to make sure that we keep a positive mental attitude. We have to become the biggest cheerleaders in our life. In that same book, Lead With No Fear, I talk about my puppet hand. When I was about 20 years old, I was working as just a volunteer, working with youth, and we had this person come in who's just a legend, and she was teaching us, and Jeannie Mayo, she said this, when you're working with youth, there's often times that you'll not be appreciated. In fact, you'll be underappreciated, you'll be overlooked, and you'll be burned out at times. And we all laughed, and she said, and and there's gonna be times that no one encourages you, so you have to learn how to encourage yourself. So she said, I want all of you to put your right hand up. And so all of us put our right hand up. And she said, now I want you to turn it into a sock puppet. So all of us went like this. She said, turn it to yourself. And so we turned it to ourselves. And we're all feeling extremely ridiculous at this point in time. And she said, now I want you to use your hand to talk to yourself and say, you are doing a great job. 
You are doing a great job. Yeah, I'm an awful ventriloquist. But you know what? As silly and ridiculous as that was, and we all laughed, I used that for the next few years as I worked with youth. I used that to encourage myself because there are times when you're just getting rejected and it seems like nobody wants to listen to your advice. So what do you do when that happens? You have to become your greatest supporter. You have to become the person that encourages yourself when it feels like no one else is. Keep a positive mental attitude. Encourage yourself. Get some supporters like I talked about who can give you proper perspective. Listen to encouraging podcasts and YouTubes. I hope that this is one for you as well. Get some other ways that you speak into yourself, some great audible books and some great music that gets you charged up. You want to keep that positive mental attitude. You got to fight for it. So how do you deal with rejection? Well, you want to keep your vision front and center. You want to then keep a positive mental attitude. And here's the third one. Identify your real worth. See, when we're rejected, there's a sense of, am I worthy? There's a sense of, maybe I'm not good enough. There's a sense of, they don't like me as a person. I'm not worthy as a person. And the bigger the rejection, the more it feels that way. And if you have enough of that in life, it starts beating you down a whole bunch. So you need to identify your real worth. And your real worth is not just in that one communication piece or in that one leadership decision. Your real worth is so much deeper. When we walk people through our program called Speak to Overcome, one of the first things we do to help people battle insecurity is really find that worth. And we coach them through that. And we coach them through understanding who they are as a person. And when you understand who you are as a person, no matter what happens when you're up on stage, no matter what happens when you're in a one-on-one conversation, you know that though that might irritate you and it might, man, it might really try to get under your skin, you know that under your real skin, in your heart, you know who you are. I remember only about a year and a half ago, one of my direct ports as in an executive role sat with me and after I picked him up and I was being very kind to him, he just laid into me. I mean, like, bam, surprised me, didn't know it was coming. He did it with a smile on his face and just, like, ah, I'm just going to get in there. And he said some words and he did some comparisons. And honestly, the first thing that happened was shock. Like, and then there was part of me that thought, Maybe he's right. I am not a good leader. I'm not this and this and this. Through the mass amount of experience that I had already had. And I had to temper some of the words he said. And one of the words he said is like, Mike, you don't have to pretend you like people. Something like that. And I was thinking about, you know, I actually know who I am. I actually know that I really like people. And you might think I'm coming across disingenuous, but this is really who I am. I'm not trying hard. This is who I am. I knew who I was. I knew my values. I knew what I was about. And though those words irritated me, and although those words uh, shook me in that moment, they didn't throw me off course. And I was able to make some great decisions as a result of my perspective on, on that conversation. So there are some benefits, but the benefits you will only get to if you walk through the proper way of responding, holding on to your vision, keeping the proper positive attitude, mental attitude. And then the third, you want to be identifying your real worth. You are not what they say. You are not when they stand up and walk out. You are not the rejection. You are far more than that and identify that real worth. And the fourth thing is to learn a lesson. Pick up a lesson. I love what John C. Maxwell talks about. He says, if you fall down, then pick something up when you get up. What can you learn from that rejection? And some, sometimes when I read reviews of my books, I think through, is that right? Is that not right? What can I learn from that? What can I take into the future? One, one of the really negative reviews of one of my books is he tells too many stories about himself. Well, okay, he's probably right. There's probably too many stories about myself in that first book. And so in the future, let me not do that. And I had a reason for doing so and it didn't shake me, but I learned a lesson from that. And those four people who stood up and walked out, I went and talked with them. And I said, 
what's going on? And I confronted that type of behavior. So what can you learn in that lesson? I know that in times when I've been the person who rejected others, that sometimes I've, I've really caused people to go into a tailspin, and I'm really sorry for that. But there's been other people who have taken the rejection that I gave to them at different times in the last 30 years and have really used it as a, as a spot to learn. So what can you learn from rejected, from getting rejected in that interview, from getting rejected in that promotion? What can you learn? And sometimes you need outside input to learn that lesson. That's why a lot of times we do work with people who are getting ready for interviews. They've been rejected again and again and again. They reach out to us and we do a mock interview and I can say, here's what I see in you. And we see an incredible breakthrough when people get an outside perspective on why they're getting rejected. They're able to learn that lesson and move forward. Whatever it means for you to learn that lesson, do it so that you can become a person that who's stronger, grow tougher, try smarter, and you can get who you can get the goal that you want. You can get to the vision that you're looking for. In the end, what happens on a day-to-day -day basis? What happens when you speak? What happens in your leadership? It does not define what you do in the end. It defines what you do right now. What are you doing right now when people reject you, say no, turn you down, or give you another dissatisfactory answer? What do you do right now? I encourage you to choose to learn, to choose positivity, to choose to advance, so that every single day you look back at that day and say, that day I did my best, and when you know you do your best, that's going to help you move forward and resist the negative temptations of rejection. Thanks for listening to Advance with Mike Acker, a podcast designed to provide an edge for leaders through improving practical leadership skills and increasing confidence in speaking. Mike is a best-selling author and business owner who has helped many leaders increase their skills and their confidence, propelling them to new heights in their personal and professional endeavors. Join an incredible group of professionals taking the steps to become better leaders at connect.stepstoadvance.com. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe so you never miss an episode.